Hello everybody, Lurgs here, welcome to my channel and today, how to replace the petrol fuel hose on your Mountfield petrol lawnmower. Right, let's get cracking. This is a Mountfield RS100 SP414, but as long as you get the right petrol fuel hose for your Mountfield petrol lawnmower, it should be the same for most other models. If you've still got some petrol in the tank, my advice would be just to run it until it's empty, or when you take the fuel pipe off, just drain it into a suitable container. What happened with this one is I went to mow the lawn and it wouldn't start so I checked the petrol in the petrol tank and it was completely empty and the whole shed where it was stored stunk of petrol and it had been leaking all over the place. What happened was the fuel hose deteriorated and it actually got a split in it and it was just leaking all over the place. And I ordered a new fuel hose for this petrol lawnmower and with the magic of video editing, it's already arrived. Make sure that you order the exact right fuel hose pipe for your Mountfield lawnmower because they will vary in width and length. This particular one has got a larger diameter at one end, so it's best not to just buy a standard fuel pipe and just try and adapt it. Just get the exact part number that you need. Today it's a nice warm sunny day so I'm just going to leave this fuel pipe in the sun just to warm it up a bit and that will just make it a bit more flexible when I'm doing the fitting for tea. Oh, The first thing we need to do is get the old fuel pipe off. Now you can see where this one has actually been cut and split. What you've got is you've got this metal clip, just squeeze that and that makes it wider and then just slide it off. Now obviously it'll be much easier with two hands. Just slide that clip, that just keeps it nice and tight. You can see where it's really deteriorated there. And as I'm pulling it out, that is the orange fuel filter. You can buy a replacement one of those if that's got lots of dirt in it, or you can just give that a good clean with some petrol. You can see how bad this pipe was. No wonder it leaked all over the place. That's really poor. Don't know how old that is. This is the fuel filter. This one is not too bad. I'm just going to slide that back in. I'm just going to put the metal clip back over there just so I don't lose it. Whilst I'm doing that, there's a link above now about how to defrost your freezer easily in under 15 minutes. Now we just need to remove this whole pipe. Now this goes behind the back of the carburetor. For easier access to get this off, we need to take this cover off. So this just unclips. This is the air filter, which is easily replaceable. But this one is actually in not too bad condition. If you want to keep that and give it a good clean, there's various different ways of doing that. To remove this cover you just need to undo these nuts here and these are 10 millimeter nuts. You just take a socket and undo those anti-clockwise. Whilst I'm doing that there's a link above now about how to fix sticking curtains on your curtain rails. That is a really top tip. and put those somewhere safe so you don't lose them. Now the petrol pipe hose goes around the back here into the carburetor and again that's got a metal clip on it. So we just pull this cover off. Now be very careful when you're pulling this off because you've got these two metal sheaths surrounding those bolts. Make sure you don't drop those on the floor. Just be aware of those. Don't pull it all the way off because it is still attached to the carburetor via the air pump. You're basically just moving it out of the way just to give you better access to the fuel pipe into the carburetor. And if we just zoom in here, you can see where this other metal sheath cover is. Make sure you don't lose that. What we're going to do now is remove this old deteriorating fuel pipe. It's got a small attachment on a bracket which pops into this hole. If you just squeeze that and push it out, that just holds the fuel pipe in place. Now just squeeze this metal clip and slide it off. Again, this is much easier with two hands. Now 
Now you should just be able to slide the fuel pipe off. If you're having a bit of difficulty, it's time to pull out the big guns, your pliers. Get a fairly decent grip on this and just pull it off. You don't want to squeeze it too tight because you've got a brass nipple which goes into the carburetor. You don't want to damage that. Whilst I'm doing that, there's a link above now about how to check your car battery using a multimeter. Great stuff, that old fuel pipe is now off. Make a note of where the fuel pipe goes, because when you put the new one back in, you do not want to put it in a different position. If your petrol lawnmower is slightly different to this one, it's definitely worth filming where the old one is, so you can look back on that when you're installing the new one. And that is the dirty old pipe, that dirty hose. Again, just gonna put the metal clip back on there so I don't lose it. Take that bracket off, because you're gonna need that for the new fuel pipe. I'm going to put it on the new fuel pipe now and we're ready to fit this on. This has been sitting in the sun so it's nice and warm, just makes it a little bit more flexible. I would not recommend putting it in warm water because you don't want water mixing with petrol, that will be bad news. I'm going to put the metal clip over the fatter end and, it, and the fatter end goes at the fuel tank end. That's really important, because that's got a slightly larger brass nipple on it. Make sure you thread it through in exactly the same place where the old one came out from. And then the fatter end, you just need to line it up, push it over the top, and just gradually squeeze it gently, twisting it left and right, and sliding it on. Once you've slid it all the way as far as it will go, like this, you can then put the metal clip on, give that a squeeze and then slide it backwards. As soon as you let go of it, that puts a tight grip on the fuel hose. Now we're just going to put this clip into that hole, that just holds it in place. And now we're ready to put the other end into the carburetor. Put the metal clip over the fuel hose. Give it a squeeze. Again, just slide it on, twisting it left and right gently. And just push it all the way home. Once it's all the way home, as far as it will go, then slide that metal clip on, give it a squeeze, and then when you let go, that gives it a nice tight grip. Fantastic. So this is now installed. Obviously we've still got no petrol in it at the moment. I'm just gonna put this cover back on Again, mind those metal sheaths, make sure you don't drop those. It just slides onto those two metal bolts, just line it up and slide it inwards. It should go in very easily, don't try and force it. Once those bolts are protruding through, you can start putting your nuts on. I always hand tighten first because you don't want to damage the threads once you've hand tightened it a tiny bit you can then get your socket on there and tighten it up fully whilst i'm doing that there's a link above now about how to clean your upvc guttering so it stays clean just going to tighten it up securely now again don't go mad with this it doesn't have to be super super tight just tight enough that it's not going to fall off. 
make sure you haven't kinked any of the hoses at the back you've got this air hose which is where you pump air into the carburetor then put the side cover on this just clips in this clip can be a bit temperamental so make sure you push it home nice and tight As you can see from the fuel tank, it is completely empty. So what I'm going to do now is just put some unleaded petrol in here. But I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top, just in case we've still got a leak, but we shouldn't have. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of petrol in here. Obviously be very, very careful when handling petrol. It is extremely flammable. If you've got a petrol canister with a hose on it, that is obviously safer. That's enough for now. Wipe up any excess petrol with a rag. Then put the fuel cap on. Obviously now we've got some petrol in there. So before we start up, we're just gonna check the hose, make sure you've got no leaks. And this one is looking great. There's no leaks on this. So it is time to fire up the beast. Pump three times. Oh yes. Just going to quickly run it up and down this garden. Come back and then check the fuel hose again. Make sure we've got no leaks. There shouldn't be any leaks at all. It's just worth double checking before you fill it all the way up again with petrol. Whilst I'm doing that, there's a link above now about how to keep your washing machine hygienically fresh. What a lovely day it is. It's good, it's running smoothly. Just gonna switch it off. Just one more final check for any leaks on the new fuel pipe. And this is looking absolutely fantastic. And I hope that helped you out fitting your new fuel hose. If you found that video useful, please subscribe by pressing this button down here so you don't miss more videos on how to save you time and money. There's also some other videos around the edges of the screen here. If any of those are useful to you, then you can select those now. Thank you for visiting my channel, everyone. I really, really appreciate it.